Welcome to this tutorial on how to make a multi-level game, which is where most of you are now progressing to. So, what I've got so far on my screen, I've got a sprite for a spaceship, and I've got a cavern it's going to fly through. So, the first block, which is in some ways the most important, is this one here and it's going to show you a few things you haven't seen before including the broadcast block which is extremely useful now let's talk you through it one step at a time so these blocks are built up of several things and here we go so basically we're starting off when the game is started with when the green flag is clicked and the next thing we do is find a forever if loop which you can find in the orange control blocks and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find this green one which if you notice here has a greater than sign now this is really useful because the whole screen in scratch is basically made up of x and y coordinates now you can see these down here changing as I move my mouse around so if I put it to the far edge of the right hand side of the screen you can see x is going to 238 and now 240 so 240 in the X position is right on the right hand side edge of the screen. So what I've done, I've gone to the operators and I found the greater than symbol which is this one. I've dragged it over here and I've put into the number box which you can just click in and then write the numbers greater than 230 so that when my spaceship is just about to go off the screen, it's about halfway off, something will happen and I'll show you what will happen in just a moment. So the first step is to drop the green greater than operator block in there. Make sure you've got 230 in there. Now the next one I found is this light blue one, X position of Sprite 1. You find that under Sensing and you will find, there we go, X position of Sprite 1, which is my spaceship. Now if the correct Sprite doesn't appear for your game, you just click on the drop down box and select the Sprite you want and I drop that into the green box there and just like magic it expands out to fit. So the logic so far for my game is when the green flag is clicked forever if the X position of the sprite is greater than 230 which means it's more than this position on the screen I'm now going to make a broadcast block. Now you can find that under the orange tab and here it's broadcast so in my case, when I first found the block, it this was just blank. So you can just click on New and then write the message name. Now I've called it Next Level because that makes sense because I want it to go to the next level. Just cancel that as I've already made it. So I'm going to pop that in there. And then finally, yeah, it's going a bit mad because I haven't told it to do anything, so I'm going to stop that. Uh, finally, I'm going to reset the X position of the spaceship to minus 240. Now, minus 240 is approximately here on the screen. You can again see the X position changing down here as I move my spaceship. So it's going to set the position of the ship to round about this point. So when it flies off the screen on this side, it reappears on the next level at the beginning, which is where I want it. Now the next part to see where we're going to use the broadcast next level is actually on the stage. So if we click onto stage, <coughs> and you'll notice under scripts I've got when I receive next level, next background, and that's literally all you need. So what it will do is when the ship reaches a position greater than here, so further along than there, it will simply broadcast next level, that's received by the stage, and it flips to the next background. So what I did earlier, I created several different blocks, uh, sorry, several different stages with different terrain for my ship to fly through. And these will cycle through whenever the ship reaches the end of the screen. So you, in effect, you get a continuously scrolling game, but built very, very simply. So if we go back to our sprite, that's what's happening here. Now, this is just to control the ship left and right. I'm using change X by 10, which means whenever I press the right arrow, it will move along the X axis, which is left and right on the screen, and it will change it by 10. And if I press the left arrow, it's minus X, which means it goes in this direction. Now, finally, I've got this block here, which is how to do collision detection, if you like, with the walls. So, what basics happen here is, when the green flag is clicked, forever if the sprite is touching the colour brown, which is the walls of my cave, stop all. 
So that basically means that if we crash into the uh, the brown uh, color, it will stop the game, which is what we want for a very simple game. So I'll show you this in effect. We start the game, I fly my little spaceship, and look, the terrain is changing. I crashed, so the game will then stop. And as you can see, it has indeed stopped. So that's it in simplicity. I'll just show you that one more time. So I'm going to click to the stages, click to the different backgrounds that I've made, start it on background one. I will just manually reposition my ship for now. And if I press the green flag, here we go, we will be able to play. So we go for our first screen, second screen, we've crashed, and the game stops. Now, if I'd managed to get past this, we would carry on for two more screens. To do that, I will simply have to make controls for up and down. So let's do that quickly now. We go back to scripts, and all I'm going to do is right-click and duplicate here and change that to the up arrow, get rid of that block, and this time if the up arrow is pressed I want to change Y by 10, that will take you up the screen, and I'm just going to duplicate this again just for speed, now I'm going to change that to minus 10, so that's minus 10 is going down the screen, and I change that for the down arrow, makes sense. And just go back to stage quickly, reset it to the very first one, and reset my spaceship here. <clears throat> now when I press start I should hopefully be able to navigate through all four of my screens. So let's go along. Right, I need to be carefully avoid this now. Ooh. Can he get through? Yep, made it. And I crashed. So I didn't quite make it to the last screen, but you get the idea. It works nicely. One thing I've just noticed, I just accidentally had these uh, the wrong way around, so that should have been the up arrow, and that should have been the down arrow. So now if I click start, my spaceship resets, and now up goes up and down goes down, and I can finish off my game. Yay, here we go. Now the nice thing about this is it will continually go through the screens, so I can go onwards and onwards. However, if I crash, oops, the game then will quit, and as you can see I can't now go to any further screens. It ends there. Now if you wanted to, you could also broadcast a message if the spaceship is touching this colour to end the to show end the game. Now it's very simply, I could go on to looks and say, for example, if I've touched the brown colour, I can say game over, just for a bit more realism. And again, let's just reset him over here somewhere, click the flag, and now if I crash, game over comes up and then the game will stop after two seconds, so I can't now go to any more screens. There we go. It's worked nicely. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Have fun implementing some of those techniques in your own game, and I'll make another tutorial soon to show you some more features of Scratch. Bye for now.